Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to answer the question, what in the world is a foreign key? Before we get into the specifics, let's begin by saying that this topic is all about the relationships between our different tables. Let's jump into an example. So within our tables, if I start viewing the order lines table, you and I know that this order ID column, well, these values are referencing a row from the orders table, right? So there's a relationship between those two tables, the orders table and the order lines table. So you and I know that that relationship exists, but MySQL, the database system itself, it has no idea. So what is a foreign key? Well, it's our way of, quote, officially describing that relationship to MySQL so that it can be aware of the relationship. The next logical question is, well, why would we bother doing this? As we can see, we were able to perform joins on this value already. So what are the benefits of setting up a foreign key? Or what are the benefits of letting MySQL know about this relationship? Well, let's go ahead and actually create a foreign key, and then we can walk through the benefits one by one. So right now, let's officially describe to MySQL that this order ID column in our order lines table, this is related to the ID column from the orders table. To do this, we would alter our order lines table. So hovering over order lines, let's use the wrench icon. Okay, and then towards the very bottom of the screen, you can see I'm selecting it right now, we see an area called foreign keys. Let's go ahead and click on that. This area will show you all of the foreign keys you currently have for this table. At the moment, we don't have any, so we can just click here to create a new one, click again. We can make up any name we want here. So the name doesn't matter, it's just for our own readability. It's just a label for the foreign key but I think it's always a logical choice to name it the same thing as the column. So I'll call it order ID. Okay, next we need to tell it the referenced table or in other words, what table are we looking at to try to create the relationship with? So if we check that, that would be our orders table. Okay, now we need to focus on this area. So first we check the column in the current table we're working on. So that's the order lines table. Right, so the relationship begins with whatever value is in the order ID column, and then it's pointing towards, and then we have to specify the column in the other table. So that would indeed be the ID from the orders table. Okay, now up here where we see on update and on delete, for now, we're going to leave those set to no action, but don't worry, we will address the different options available here a bit later in the video. For now though, let's move forward. So in the bottom right corner, let's click apply. You can click apply again on this review screen. We can then close out of this screen. We can close out of this tab. Cool, we just created our first foreign key. Now let's talk about what benefits it offers to us. First of all, MySQL is now going to make sure that the item or entity, or I should say the row that we're trying to point towards with this value, it's going to make sure that that actually exists. So for example, before we added the foreign key, we could have entered a completely bogus value for this order ID column. But now that MySQL is officially aware of this relationship, right, it knows that this is supposed to be referencing a row in the orders table. Well, it will only let create or update operations on this order lines table go through if the order ID value actually exists over in that other table. We can test this out right now. So if you try to double click on this order ID for any of the rows, so I'll just double click this one. And if I enter in a totally bogus value of just a really huge number, so maybe just 99999. The point is, is obviously there is no order in my orders table with this primary key ID. And then if we click apply to try to actually perform that update, here's the review screen with the SQL code that would perform that update. And if you click apply in the bottom right corner, Cool, we get an error message. And right about here, you can see it did not go through because the foreign key constraint failed. In other words, that order that we were trying to point towards doesn't exist, so MySQL doesn't even let this operation go through. And it's the same way if you tried to create a brand new row. It's gonna force the validity of this value. So that's one benefit of a foreign key. MySQL is now helping us ensure or guarantee the integrity of our relationships across tables. 
On that same note, if we try to delete one of the items that is being pointed towards, MySQL won't let us do that. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll actually close this tab uh, because I don't want this bogus value trying to be updated any longer. Okay, and then if we open a new tab where if we look at all of our orders, so not the order lines table, but just the overall orders table. Okay, and now if I tried to delete this first row, so you could just single click anywhere on that row so that it's selected like this and then right click and choose delete row. Or if you wanted to write the SQL yourself, it would just be delete from, the table name is orders, where ID equals one. So if I run that command, that operation fails. Now the error message is off the bottom of the screen, but I just copied and pasted it here so we can read it. Essentially, it's letting you know you cannot delete that row because other rows are pointing towards it or trying to reference it. So if we really wanted to delete, let me go back to the overall orders view. If we really wanted to delete this row that I'm selecting here, the order of one, you would need to first go into the order lines table and delete any and all rows that are trying to point towards or reference this. So again, MySQL is doing this to help us ensure the integrity of the relationships across our tables. If MySQL would have just let me delete this row, well, that means the relationships in the other table would be broken or they'd be false. They'd be pointing towards something that doesn't exist. Now, sometimes this behavior is a great safeguard, but there are other situations where this is not what we want. And luckily, MySQL does offer us a few other options. And this is where we're going to circle back to that screen where we created the foreign key. So do this with me. On our order lines table, not orders, but order lines, click on the wrench icon once again. Okay, and then remember towards the bottom, that's where we can click on foreign keys. We only have the one order ID right here. Now, remember this area? that I'm selecting now, I said we would revisit this. So if you click on this on update dropdown, you can see the available choices are restrict, cascade, set null, and no action. So what in the world do these different options mean? Well, first of all, I wanna let you know that restrict and no action are the same. Maybe that's not the case in Microsoft SQL Server or in Postgres, but in MySQL, restrict and no action are the same. So essentially, this is the default option that we just chose for this foreign key. This is what we've been used to. This is what's causing that behavior where we cannot delete the item that's being pointed towards. However, that's not the only option. So let's test this out. So instead of restrict or no action, let's set it to cascade. And let's do that for both on update and on delete. Let's set it to cascade. Now, what in the world does cascade mean? Well, let me show you. First, let's apply these changes. So in the bottom right corner, click apply. Here is the review screen. So you can just see we're changing that to be cascading for both. Click apply, let's close that. Okay, and now if we go to our orders table, and now if we try to delete order number one, so if I click on this, right click, choose delete row, and then actually click apply to actually perform the operation. Notice we do not get an error message. We just successfully deleted order number one without having to first delete any of the items that were pointing towards it. And if we go into our order lines table, those three lines that were pointing towards order number one, they got deleted too for us automatically. So MySQL deleted them for us. So that's what the cascade option does for you. If you make a change to the parent row or the row that's being pointed towards, MySQL will sort of echo or cascade that change throughout the table that's doing the pointing. Let's walk through another example of how the cascade option works. So right now we have these two order lines and you can see that their order ID is pointing towards number two. So back in our orders table, they're pointing towards this row right, the overall order of number two. However, in this orders table, if we change or update this ID value here to be 999, and then we actually apply, so click apply in the bottom right to actually have that update operation go through, okay? Now, if we go back to our order lines table or refresh the view, notice that value got automatically updated for us. 
MySQL updated these rows. So because MySQL was aware of the relationship, right, it used to be number two, well, it looked through this table and it said, aha, that parent row or the row that was being pointed towards, its ID changed, so let's echo out or cascade those changes everywhere that's applicable. So that's a quick review of the cascade option. Now there's only one last option to talk about. Let's cover that now. So if we go back into the order lines wrench screen to alter the table, if we click back on foreign keys down at the bottom, over here, in addition to cascade, you can also choose an option called set null. We actually cannot choose this value right now because currently our order ID column is set to not null. In other words, that column cannot be empty. It must contain a value. So in order to explain what in the world this set null option does, let's first just go back to the columns area for altering this table. And for our order ID column, just as a quick test, if you unchecked the not null checkbox, in other words, so it's okay to leave this column empty. So if we apply that change, and go ahead and click apply on this review screen. You can close that screen. Now, if we go back into foreign keys and we want to set the option to set null, let's set it for on update and delete. Now I can explain what in the world set null does. So if we go ahead and click apply, click apply on the review screen. Okay, now if we go to our orders table, and imagine I delete this overall order that has an ID of 999. So I can click anywhere on it, then click delete, click apply, click apply on the review screen, we can close that. Now if we go back to order lines, notice that MySQL automatically updated these two order line rows so that their order ID is null. So it didn't automatically delete the rows entirely, it just sort of hollowed out these values because obviously that relationship can't exist any longer if the parent item or the item that we were trying to point towards was deleted. Now there is no right or wrong answer in terms of which one of these options you want to use. You can use restrict or no action, you can use cascade, or you can use set null. Every database and problem you're trying to solve is going to be different, but these are the options that are available to us. And before we bring this lesson to a close, I want to discuss one last benefit that foreign keys bring to the table, and that is that they force indexing. In order to explain what I'm referring to, let's go back into our orders table because I deleted both of our overall orders in our previous examples. So right now, let's create a new order row just so we have some example data to work with because practice makes perfect and we're going to practice adding a foreign key for this user ID column in our orders table. The key point here is that we have not yet added that foreign key and so I want to give you a before and after look at how efficient MySQL can be when looking up relationships with and without indexing. So let's add a little bit of sample data back into this orders table so to insert a new item really quick, I would just write my own SQL statement and say insert into the orders table, one set of parentheses, values, another set of parentheses. We don't need to provide an ID that will be generated automatically by MySQL. We do want to provide a date and then comma also a user ID. So for the values, for the date, we can just call the now function. So now followed by parentheses, comma, for the user ID, let's just use a value of one, which is our meows a lot cat. So we can go ahead and click the lightning bolt to run this statement. Now if we go back and view our orders table, perfect. And actually let's give ourselves more than just one row so that our before and after example will be crystal clear that the performance is improving. So you can just go back into the tab that we were just in, right where we wrote this insert code and maybe just change the user ID to three for the barks a lot dog. So I can click the lightning bolt and let's actually place another order. So just click the lightning bolt again. So now our orders table should have three overall rows. Perfect. One from meows a lot, two from barks a lot. So these results are what we would expect, but as a human being, these user ID values don't immediately mean anything to us. So imagine instead we wanted extra rows here that actually spelled out the user's name and maybe their email address or their species. Well, to do that, we would just perform a join, 
right? A join based on this value and whatever it's pointing towards in the animals table. So we could adjust our query to say join the animals table. And we could even drop down right before the word join so it fits on a line like this. Join the animals table on the condition that orders.userID equals animals.id. So if we run this query, cool. Instead of just seeing the user ID value, we can actually see the animal's name, their species, so on and so forth. Now, to get back to the actual point I'm trying to illustrate, imagine if we only wanted to see orders that were placed by meows a lot. Well, we could add on to our query, maybe on a new line, we could just say where orders.userID equals one, which is for meows a lot. Cool, now we just see that one line. In order to get this result, MySQL had to perform more than one operation. First, it needed to perform the join, and then after that, it needed to filter for only the rows in this current table where user ID equals one. Now to really go behind the scenes and look at how MySQL is performing these operations, remember, at the start of your command, you can include explain. So if I run this query again with explain, there are those two different operations, right? This operation is looking in the animals table to perform the join. This operation is just looking in the current orders table for the rows where user ID equals one. Now the whole reason I'm showing you this is I want you to focus on this area called rows, right? This is how many rows MySQL needed to examine to give us the results we asked for. In other words, this operation is great. It's very fast and efficient but this operation has the potential to be very slow, right? Because it performed a full table scan. It examined every single row to get its results. Now we only have three rows in this table, but imagine if instead we had three million. We don't wanna to have to look through each and every one of them. So the question becomes, why was this operation able to be so efficient? Well, it's because when we performed the join, the thing that we were looking for in the animals table, it's ID, was the primary key. And remember, primary keys are always indexed, and indexes make lookups very quick. So for this operation, MySQL could just look in the index. However, for this operation, this is when we're saying where user ID equals one, because our user ID column is not indexed, MySQL needs to look through every single row. So the billion dollar question is, what does this have to do with foreign keys? Well, MySQL won't even let you create a foreign key unless the thing that you're trying to point towards is an indexed column. You will actually receive an error message and it won't let you create the foreign key if that's not the case. Now, in terms of the column that's doing the pointing towards something else, well, MySQL will let you create a foreign key if it isn't indexed. It won't throw an error, but here's the good news. If it's not already indexed, when you create the foreign key, MySQL will index it for you. To see this in action, let's make this operation more efficient. So if we look at our orders table, we would wanna set up a foreign key on this table based on the user ID column, right? These values are what's powering the relationship. Now remember, we have not set up this foreign key yet and we have not indexed this column. So let's go set up the foreign key right now. Remember, we can click the wrench icon on the orders table down towards the bottom, we can click on foreign keys. Let's create a brand new one. I'll name it user ID. The name doesn't matter, this is just our own label. The reference table is the animals table. The column we're interested in is the user ID column. And yes, the column we're trying to reference in the animals table is the ID value. Let's go ahead and click apply. We can click apply on this review screen. We can close out of this screen. And now if we go back to this tab where we just ran that explain, I'm going to run it again and notice now this second operation does not need to perform a full table scan. This is because when we just created that foreign key, MySQL saw that that column user ID, that it wasn't already indexed, so MySQL created that index for us. Yes, we could have created the index ourselves, but it's just another nice benefit of a foreign key. Right, MySQL is smart enough to know that if you have a relationship, you're probably going to want to query for it from any given direction, and so it makes perfect sense that it should be indexed. That's going to bring this lesson to a close. In our next video, we're going to create our reviews table. 
Let's keep our momentum rolling, and I'll see you then.